You are looking at an ICOM IC27H 2 meter amateur radio transceiver. I recently acquired this radio at a local ham fest for a good price. I've got it home, I've put it on the bench, and the radio seems to work fairly well with one exception. And that exception is that the squelch control doesn't seem to work. I'll show you what I mean by that. So right now I'm tuned to uh, a frequency that doesn't have any activity on it. And you can hear the static in the background. I've got the squelch turned all the way off. Now if I turn the squelch up, that should mute this static at some point. But as you can see, turning the control all the way up has no effect on muting the audio. As you can see, I've got the top and bottom covers off of the radio. There were just four screws on each cover holding it on, but it looks like to get a good look at the squelch and volume controls, I'm going to need to remove the faceplate here, and it looks like there's four more screws, two on the bottom and two on the top, and I'll probably need to pull these knobs off of here as well. So I've removed the four screws that are holding on the plastic bezel, and I've also removed the volume and squelch knobs but the channel selector knob needs to come off as well. And this has kind of got a little secret to it. There is a rubber grip that surrounds the knob body itself. And when you pull the rubber grip off, you can see that there is a um, Allen screw in here. So I'm just going to take this 1.5 millimeter Allen key and get in there and loosen that up. And this should pull right off. And now the faceplate bezel should come right off. So after taking the faceplate off, I tried, just for the heck of it, squirting a little bit of deoxit into the control areas. And mostly it looked like I was able to get the straw in kind of behind this face of the front plate and kind of get down in. Uh, needless to say, I did hook the radio back up and test it and uh, it had really no effect on the radio at all. So I'm going to continue with the disassembly and see if I can get these uh, potentiometers out of here. So it looks like the next step is going to be to remove the four screws here, one, two on that side and two on this side, so that this front assembly can kind of come forward and then I'll probably have to remove these two nuts that are on the shafts of these potentiometers and then hopefully that'll allow them to be moved kind of out of the way there. So I've got the screws removed and I've got the two nuts holding the uh, squelch and volume controls removed and you can see that this pulls out a little bit, not a whole lot. And I think that's mostly because these wire harnesses are zip tied to the main chassis of the radio. And I think if I cut those zip ties this would come out a little more. What you're looking at here is a close-up of the front panel of the radio. Here's the microphone connector and the front face of the radio. The radio is also upside down, so this is the squelch control and the volume control is down here now. And these are loose, and what you can see is they're mounted together as an assembly on a little circuit board that's here. You can see it. I'm kind of wiggling it there. As you can see here, I've got the radio uh, torn down a bit more. And then the microphone connector was attached to the front panel here. It just protrudes through this hole and is held on by this ring, which has some notches in it. And this can just be loosened by using a pair of needle nose pliers and backing that off. There's a couple washers behind it too. And then uh, I was able to move the whole front panel out of the way by cutting, there's a couple of uh, zip ties that hold the wire harnesses together in here and once I cut those I was able to pull this kind of apart far enough to back this assembly out that has the two potentiometers on it, the uh, squelch control and the volume control. I also had to disconnect this wire that's connected to the microphone jack. So there's a lot going on in here, there's a lot of very thin wires and uh, I'm trying to be as delicate as possible with this, although it does require a little bit of force to kind of get things out. Um, but I'm trying not to pull any wires out or break any solder connections or anything like that. So, Here's a closer look at the volume and squelch board. You can see that these 
controls here are just soldered onto a little small circuit board. This one over here is the squelch control and it looks like it's a dual gang pot. The uh, volume control is over here and that appears to also be a dual gang pot but of course it has the on off switch built into it as well. I've got my ohm meter ready to go and I'm going to probe this potentiometer and see uh, if it probes the way that it should. I have found the schematic for the radio and this potentiometer is a dual gang pot. So now if I probe the opposite pins on each gang I think I should see the 10K if this is a good pot and if I can get my probes to make contact here. Okay so you can see that this first gang is 9.64 K ohms which is within spec that's normal. So now I'll move up to the top gang and I assume that should be the same. That one's reading 11 so that's a little high but that's okay probably still within spec good enough for this anyway. So now what I'll do is I'll check the resistance between one of the outer pins and the center pin which would be the wiper pin for the potentiometer and before I do that I'm going to make sure this is somewhere in the middle of its range so I should get in theory somewhere around 5k plus or minus you know whatever so in theory with the potentiometer in the center I should read somewhere around 5k right there that's reading 12k which is a little interesting. I'm going to turn that one way and we'll check that again. And that's still reading 12K no matter which way I turn it. So either something's going on with this potentiometer or I'm not probing the pins correctly or I'm getting some kind of resistance from somewhere else in the circuit. Now I'm going to check the bottom. Isn't giving me any reading at all. That's open. That's like an open circuit. So I really think this is a bad pot. As you can see here, I've got the potentiometer out of the radio and I've got it hooked up to some clip leads and now I'll check the uh, resistance of it out of the circuit uh, just to make sure that you know the circuit isn't fouling up my measurements at all so right now I've got the clip leads across the outer uh, pins of the potentiometer which will measure the full resistance of it and then what I'll do is I'll move one of the leads to the center pin and then actuate the control and uh, we'll see uh, how it looks on the meter as you can see the potentiometer is 9.63 K uh, across the outer pins on the back row of pins. Uh, and I think that's what it measured when it was in the circuit. So uh, that's a good sign there. So I've moved the red lead over to the center pin. And now if I turn the control here, you can see nothing's happening. I'm reading open circuit on here. So um, that tells me that the, the center wipe of the potentiometer, at least on the back gang there, isn't really doing anything. Actually now it looks like it's doing something here. Yeah, I felt it kind of bind up and then it started to work so it, um, you can see it's still reading open all the way up but if I turn it there now it's starting to show signs of life and I can feel it kind of grinding in there um, so something's definitely happening now so I've got the leads on the outer pins of the first row now and you can see the resistance is about 11k which is pretty close to what it should be I guess so what I'll do now is I'll move again the red lead over to the center pin and we'll check it again. So now I'm on the center pin and I'll start exercising the control here. And you can see as I turn it, it goes open again. And now I'm getting 5K and it's changing here. A little bit might be because I'm moving the leads around a little bit, but, but now that I'm feeling this binding in here, uh, it's starting to kind of work. So I've been fooling around with this for a little bit. I've been squirting more deoxid in it and trying to make it work. And just when I think I've got it going, I find another dead spot where it just starts to act flaky again. So the deoxid's helping, but I think this thing is just
there's no way to really open this thing up. Um, well, I think I could open it up. I'm just not sure I could get it back together functional. So I think the best thing to do is to replace this thing. Now, what I've found in my junk box is some potentiometers that are more or less the same size. They look like uh, the same pin spacing and everything. So I should be able to use one of these and physically drop it into the radio. Uh, the problem is, is that these two potentiometers are 40k potentiometers and not 10k like the one that came out of the radio. So um, that'll mean that they won't work quite right. The other difference is that these have a center detent. In other words, halfway through the rotation, there's sort of a, a sticky spot, so to speak. I think these might have been balance controls in some sort of radio, like a left and right, or a fader front and back or something. So they, they stopped in the middle to kind of let you know that, you know, that was the center point between left and right, or something along those lines. I really don't know. Here's a look at the two potentiometers side by side. The old one is the green one, and the new one is the blue one. You can see that they're very close in physical dimension. The shaft on the blue one looks a little bit longer in the camera, but in reality it's about the same length. And you can see from this shot that the pinout on both potentiometers is roughly the same as well. So it ought to drop right into that circuit board without any trouble. You should be able to see here that I've got the potentiometer soldered in and the uh, the pins just dropped right into this little circuit board. Everything was a match. And you may be able to see here behind the radio that the, uh, the body and everything fits just fine in the assembly. So uh, now I just got to reassemble everything. So now I just need to reassemble everything back into the radio and then power it up and test it out. I'll try and reassemble this on camera this time. So what I'm going to do is try and get this assembly lined up with the holes in the front panel of the radio. And this is a little tricky just because I'm trying not to stretch out the wires here too much. I don't want to pop any wires off of any circuit boards and there are quite a number of wires in here. so. I'm trying to be as delicate as possible, but it does require a little bit of force to kind of maneuver things here. So I've got the two controls in the holes here on the front panel. So now I'll just pull these through, kind of get that seated. And then I'll take one of the nuts that originally held it on, and I'll just put one of them on for now, just to hold it on there. Okay, now that that's on, I should be able to put the mic jack back in place. And again, I just want to be careful I don't pull any wires on. And this is just a little tricky because there's a, uh, a little tab on the side of the front face here that prevents it from going in straight. So you got to kind of wiggle it in. And now that it's in place, just to keep it from backing out, I'm going to put the hardware back on to hold it. So there was a washer and a lock washer and then this sort of nut with grooves in it. I've just got that on snug now just to hold it in place and then there's this one wire that's connected to the back of the mic jack that needs to go back into its connector. One last thing to do before I put the screws back in is to attach a jumper wire between this point on the back of the microphone jack uh, mini circuit board here to the side of the case. This provided a chassis ground. Um, I had to cut that when I originally took this apart, so now I'm going to restore that connection. I'm just going to take a cut lead from a uh, resistor or something here and just solder that in place. Now that I've got everything soldered up, I'm going to put a couple of screws in place here in the front panel just to hold it together. And the last thing that I'll do before I test the radio is put the bottom cover on so I have the speaker connection. So I'll just need to reconnect this wire. So I'll plug that in and I'll just drop this on for now. I won't bother screwing that on just yet. So now I'll apply power to the radio and 
we'll see what happens. So I've got the radio set up and ready to go. Let's see what happens. I'm going to shut this light off here so you can see the front display. Okay, so let's try the squelch out since that was the whole point of this repair. Right now it's down uh, all the way off to the left, so now if I turn the knob here, I'll turn this up so you can hear it. Now I've reached that center detent that was on this potentiometer, and it's starting to cut out right at the center detent. And if I get just a little beyond the detent, it looks like it's working. So I'm getting, I'm having to turn this up maybe a little higher than I would normally like in order for it to work, but it's still quite usable, even though that potentiometer isn't quite the right value. So I found another repeater that's playing here, and you can see that it's not giving me any signal on the meter there. So I'll try and turn the squelch up and see if I can squelch that out. And it looks like I can't. I've got the squelch all the way up, and I'm still hearing the repeater. So I guess that's okay. I'm able to squelch out the background noise. And, uh, oh, it looks like there's almost a repeater coming in there with the squelch off. Yeah, so there is something coming in on this frequency. I don't even know what that would be. Uh, it's just barely there in the noise, and I'm able to squelch that out. But anything that's sort of just above the noise, I can't squelch out. Which, you know, again, is okay. Generally, I'm not squelching out anything I can hear. Um, but there may be instances where, uh, you know, you would want to squelch out a weaker signal, and, uh, you, you know, you won't be able to do it with this potentiometer. So overall, um, I'm happy with the repair, uh, considering that I was able to find the, the potentiometer right in my junk box. I didn't have to order it or, or anything like that. It's not working quite to factory specs, but it's working, you know, good enough for me. So I'm going to finish putting the radio back together here, and uh, we'll call this done. As you can see, I've got the radio all put back together and everything still seems to be uh, working as it should. Two things that I'm noticing about the radio. The first, uh, you may be able to hear in the background. And I'm not sure if the microphone is picking that up or not, but there's a slight hum coming through the speaker of the radio. And I'm not sure if that's from my power supply or some interference I've got in the shack here, uh, but there's just a very low hum and oddly enough it goes quieter when I turn the volume all the way up. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that. But it's there and it's it's slightly noticeable, but for what I intend to use this radio for, it's, it's not really an issue. Uh, the second thing that I noticed, and I expected this, was that the um, indicator line here on the squelch knob now no longer lines up to a point where it makes sense. Um, and that's because this potentiometer was originally, you know, set up to be like a fader control or something and mounted probably in a different orientation, <clears throat> and it's got that center detent. So when I actually get to the center detent, the um, indicator is straight down, and with the squelch all the way up, the indicator is almost straight up, and with the squelch all the way off, it's almost uh, straight up on the other direction so it's really not pointing in a logical manner but that's a very minor detail in my uh, opinion. I suppose I could have tried to order the correct part to bring the radio back to factory specifications. Uh, however I was able to save a few bucks by um, using a part that I had in my junk box. And like I said for the intended use of this radio I think that's going to be just fine. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching.